Well, this is one of the great tragedies. This is a story that is difficult to talk about even today. A couple of years almost after Ukraine International Airlines flight 752 went down, a scheduled international passenger flight flying out of Tehran into Kiev. 167 passengers on board and nine crew, 176 fatalities. Two of those people were beloved family members of our next guest. Hamed Ishmael Young is a spokesperson for the Association of Families of Flight PS 752 victims. He tragically lost his wife and his daughter on that flight. The organization just released a report on the incident titled The Lonely Fight for Justice, an investigative analysis of the downing of Ukraine International Airlines Flight PS752. Mr. Ishmael Young, kind enough to join us this morning. Welcome to the show and thank you for being here with us. I'm sure that this subject is extremely painful to talk about and I appreciate and so deeply respect your willingness to join us this morning. As you prepare for an interview like this, how do you prepare your head and your heart? Good morning, Ryan. Uh, thanks for having me. It's it's very difficult, actually, to be ready for the interviews, especially when you have interviews back to back, and uh, to just uh, you know have a have peace in your mind when you talk to the media is the hardest part because you want to talk about something that took your whole, whole life away. And, uh, but that's my job. And, uh, I have accepted to do that for the families as a representative of the families. And I have to do it. We can see for those that are watching this interview on YouTube over your shoulder, a, a beautiful image, um, looks to me, is, is it a sketch? Is it a painting of your wife and daughter? Would, would you tell us about them? Yeah, my wife, uh, uh, I'm a dentist. She was a dentist too. Uh, we kind of grew up together. We we uh, met at college in Iran um, um, 26 years ago, and uh, then uh, we immigrated to Canada 2010 when my daughter was six months old. Rira, uh, she would have been 11 today if she was with us, and. Uh, so I lost both of them uh, uh, on PS752 and uh, just what I've done so far in the last two years was fighting for them, for their rights to live and for their right to be with me. But uh, it's still ongoing. When you talk about this fight, um, th- there have been so many fronts on which your organization, this Association of Families, and others, including foreign diplomats representing Canada and other nations affected by this, uh, have tried to ensure that justice is being served, starting with securing the crime scene, the, the scene of the crash. I mean, that's where it has begun. But there's been so much since then, and I know that the fight is, is far from over. On which fronts do you personally fight? Uh, you know... The, the most important things, uh, Ryan, the important thing that's understandable by public is in this crime, the investigator is the murderer. The people who, you know, the authorities who murdered these 176 people, they took their role to do the investigation, the safety investigation and the criminal investigation. And the whole world, the whole all the affected countries, the IKO, I mean, the International uh, uh, Civil Aviation Organization, all of them, they stood silent and let it to be done. So that's why we're here now. The safety investigation was done by Islamic Republic of Iran, and it was just full of lies and deceives. And then the other, the other groups tried to give us some uh, information, like the forensic team of Canada, Mr. Goodell's report, uh, Dr. Agnes Calamart from UN, and none of us, none of none of these reports, basically gave us any any information that what really happened on January eight, and uh, still we don't know the truth. And this is the first time I, I can tell that the families of victims in an in an aviation 
incident had to prepare a report, provide a report. In the last 76 years, in the history of IKO, uh, no country has shut down his own plane. This is the first time this is unique. And uh, based on Annex 13 by IKO, the country of the crash has responsibility to publish the report, and the country of the crash is the murder. So uh, then it fell on our shoulders to get the information from aviation and military experts, from the families, from witnesses, from informants, to put them together. And we try to document this crime. I think that's very important and that's very unique. If you go back, Ryan, to the history of aviation, in 1988, Locker B bombing in Scotland, that was a Pan-American 103. And uh, uh, British government and US government did a very thorough investigation. If you go back to MX-17, like seven years ago, you remember that Mal Malaysian airplane in Ukraine was shut down. The Ukraine delegated the investigation to Netherlands and they did a very, very good job. But for us, the governments, they stood aside. They don't, we don't even have a criminal investigation. Ukraine is the only one who opened the criminal case and here in Canada, RCMP has refused to do so. Uh, what, yeah. Why do you think that is? I mean, I, I, I wanted to ask you a little later in the interview. I'll ask you right now with regards to the, the response from the federal government here in Canada, the response from the RCMP or CSIS or what have you. Can you take us into to your association, your, your group's correspondence with them and why you believe they've not done an adequate job in your assessment of representing these families? You know, we, we as an association, OK, we represent 140 families and we came to, to RCMP in a good faith, to just have the full cooperation with them, to have the testimonies. Okay, first of all, they waited about 11 months to start the interviews with the families. You, when you do investigation about the crime, you have to do it right away when people, their, their memory is fresh. But they started that in November, November last year. I know that they have conducted uh, interviews with 57 family members in Canada, but they had to pass this information to Ukraine and they haven't. And uh, we have had several meetings with ministers, uh, even RCMP commissioner, Commissioner Lockheed twice. My understanding is that, that there is no political will to open a criminal case for the second worst terrorist attack against Canadians in the history of Canada after in Air India. That's the political will that is missing here. And uh, now me as a Canadian citizen, I have to go to Ukraine and ask them to take this case to international criminal court or have a domestic court in Ukraine. Can you imagine 55 Canadian families go to Kiev to have a court in Ukraine instead of Ottawa? That's our fate in future. This report, uh, I want to ask you to take us into it, among other revelations, accuses Iranian authorities of tampering uh, with phones and tablets and other electronic devices, misidentifying the remains of some of the passengers killed on that flight. Uh, can you explain to us how this report came about and in your mind what the most notable findings are? In other words, what's most important and I hate to ask you to prioritize, but what's most important with regards to the relevance and the significance of this independent report? Okay, so uh, I, one of the phones is my wife's phone and my wife Apple Watch. I got them um, uh, from Iran. They said, this is your wife's. So I gave them to us. For one year, I didn't have the courage to touch them, honestly. And then I gave them to... to uh, RCMP. It was in the hands of RCMP for seven months, and after seven months, they said, "Okay, we can't do anything because they were so damaged." And I, after I got them, so I gathered some. Uh, we gathered some phones and laptops from other families too, and gave it to a, a private investigator who had the capability to to do this investigation. And the the result was shocking, that uh, this damage to the phones is not consistent with the crash, that they have removed communication cards, memory cards, they destroyed them. So why why they did why did they do that? They wanted to hide something. So uh, then with other information that we have, that we know that the uh, operator of the uh, air defense unit was an experienced person, we know that the, this misalignment and this misidentification story is absolutely false. 
and it's fabricated by Iran, we know that the passengers of the uh, flight have been asked in the airport if they have American passport. They wanted to be sure that there's no American on the flight. So we know that the bodies of the victims were mishandled after that. Even the DNA test was not properly. When we put all this information together, I think you can make an, an, another conclusion that this flight was shut down deliberately by the Iranian regime. And uh, we don't know what was the scenario. We don't know what was going on in their minds because it's very difficult for us to read the minds of the criminals. And uh, I'm very, I'm very uh, disappointed with, with Canadian forensic report that they fell for the story of 105 degrees misalignment. And we disagree with Minister Al Gabra and the Transport uh, Ministry that. They, they said, yes, this, this report uh, very, is very similar to the Canadian government report. No, it's not. It's not very similar. The conclusion is different. The way we looked at the, uh, uh, this crime is different. And our sources are completely different. I want to say something to you, Ryan. Uh, a forensic report by Canada, they say they got this information from intelligence. And they treated us like strangers that we should not have an access to intelligence. So there is no backup. There is no references. These passengers of the flight, if you remember, majority of them were doctors, dentists, PhD students, master's students, bachelor's students, very talented people. And I can tell you the family members are the same thing. The team who, pro who provided this report, nine family members plus six aviation and military experts and five uh, legal experts, the nine family members, all of them, they have background in university and research. So we are not people that uh, just say, okay, let's write a report. No, we didn't write the report. We produced this report based on the information. Hamed, uh, just a few days ago on Sunday, an Iranian military court began a hearing over the military's admitted shooting down of this passenger plane. Um, and I know that families of victims and, and lawyers have attended that session, uh, representing over 100 legal complaints. Uh, the judge presiding over these military hearings says that he hopes the court will issue a precise, quick, and serious verdict based on a reasonable, fair, transparent, clear-cut, and strong procedure. Do you have any sense that that's even remotely possible? First, I have to say, the families who participated in that court that day, they are all aware of the situation. They know the Islamic Republic of Iran very well. They just want to show to the world that there is no justice in the Islamic Republic of Iran. That's their fight. And if you see, before they go to the court, they gather in front of the court, and I can tell you all the uh, military agents, military personnel, and plainclothes agents of IRGC were besieged to suppress them, oppress them in front of the court. They, they had body search three times to let the families get into the court, and uh, they didn't let them to take the photos of the victims. And finally, after negotiation, they said, okay, bring them, bring them in. And the guy who was reading the indictment is the same guy that six months ago told them we killed them. Good thing we did. So that's the guy who wants to give us justice. And finally, the, the, the court session, the hearing session, ended without any conclusion because the family's objections and the lawyer's objections. And they said, OK, uh, let's do it another day. So we don't believe in any justice in Iran. And that's why. And that's a criminal procedure. So that's why we need a criminal court in Canada, in Ukraine, in ICC. People can check out ps752justice.com to view this report, to support you, to learn more about your efforts along with the other families involved with this association. I'd like to read a portion of a letter that you posted publicly. You wrote it to your daughter on that web page, to your beautiful daughter, Rira. You say, I promise you, I'll keep your memory alive no matter how forgetful they are to the United Nations, to the embassies, to the International Civil Aviation Organization, to the parliament. I will write to whomever is willing to hear my plea for justice. I will do anything. I'll go on strikes, send emails, meet officials, anything. I will put my entire being on the tip of this spear. And with all my strength, I will aim at them, at their deceit and their malice. 
I don't know how long this journey will last, but at the end of it, I will reunite with you. So long, sweetheart. What will justice look like to you? I just want to say this photo I took from her was in Tim Hortons uh, three years ago before her concert. And uh, she was like, uh, oh, dad, you take a photo again. And she doesn't want to look at me directly. One of those dad and daughter moments. Okay, so uh, justice for me is that those people who did that, who killed my wife, my daughter, another 174 beautiful souls, uh, they have to pay for this. We need arrest warrants for the high officials of Iran, Supreme Leader of Iran, the IRGC commanders, National Security uh, Council members, and we need we need to take them to IKO, to uh, ICJ. Yesterday, there was a statement published by four countries right after our report. And uh, there is another disappointing moment for me because they gave Iran another chance. And they said, OK, you haven't negotiated with us, negotiated, negotiated with us, and we give you till the end of the year. Okay, if Iran comes to the negotiation table till the end of the year, what should we do? Wait for another six months for them to play these uh, delaying tactic games and things like that? I don't know. They have given Iran a lot of time, two years. You know, Ryan, they have asked me and other family members to stay calm and be patient. But I have run out of patience. Two years to just for a momentum to start this legal procedure. This is this is long, and we don't even have an impartial investigation. This is lacking here. An IKO job was to do that, and the government's job was to do that, but they didn't do it. Please, I ask everybody, go to ps752justice.com slash docs and, and read our report. If you see any conspiracy theory there, you can blame us for conspiracy theory. They're all facts. They're all facts. The support that Iran, what Iran did to the families, the human rights um, uh, abuses, like the, the the way we came to this conclusion, the way they they opened the airspace that night, the way they didn't cancel the flights, the way they treated the families, they, they the way they treated the protesters. There are lots of people in prison right now because they let candles for the passengers of PS752. And we want them to be released right now. But do you see these governments, they put enough pressure on them? No, do you see that IRGC, the entity who did it, is in terrorist list in Canada? No. Do you see that they freeze the assets of the officials of Iran in Canada? No, they don't. There, is, there are tools, the Magnitsky sanctions here in Canada, if they apply them on top, top officials in Iran, all the assets of the top officials of Iran can be frozen here in Canada. But they don't do it. And the other countries, UK doesn't do it too. UK has another issues with, with Iran and they step back and they don't want to get involved. That's my understanding. Hamed, why do you think? Why do you think? What's your theory? Why, why, why do you think there's such a, an, an inadequate response? Okay, so let me tell you something. Yeah, after this, you you, you mentioned uh, coronavirus. I don't think that we deal with the pandemic of coronavirus. We deal with pandemic of politics. Mm. In instead of standing for people, for for their rights, and standing the right of the history, they just talk about diplomacy. And but sometimes diplomacy doesn't work. Sometimes you have to put pressure. Sometimes you have to be firm and resolute. But they don't. They don't think the same way that the families of the victims think. They don't listen to the voice of the victims. And they go to the negotiation tables, they shake hands, they smile. And all of them is because of politics and economy, Ryan. That's it. That's why the voice of the victims won't be heard. Dr. Hamed Ishmael Young lost his wife, Parisa's daughter, Rira, after they traveled from Toronto to Iran for a 12-day trip for Parisa's sister's wedding. And on their way home, their passenger flight 752 was shot down. Hamed, I do not have adequate words to bring you comfort, but I can make you a promise that we will not forget your wife nor your daughter nor this story, and you will have an ally with this show and this audience until justice is served. Thank you for your time today. 